there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco, and this is another episode of Let's Make a Tutorial. This is not Let's Make a Game. This is going to actually be a tutorial video. Haha, <laughs> trick it. All right. Um, so this is going to be on collision boxes and hit boxes. Um, this is actually kind of an addendum to my initial video series, the platforming series, and. Um, this is just a better way of dealing with collisions in a platforming game. There's a lot of problems with the way I set it up initially. You can get stuck in the floor and the walls and you'll drift upwards. And so using a collision box is going to be the best way to get around that. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a simple platformer and then we will look at the collisions. Okay, we are back. So um, here is our platformer we've set up. Cool background, right? I know we got this moon. I don't know why I stuck it there, but he's going to bounce around the screen. Anyway, so um, we're not using a collision box or a hitbox in this version yet. So this is just to show you what is wrong with that when you don't use one. So what we have here is a player object and the platform movement object. So if we go to our code, um, we will see that this is our movement code and animation code. We don't need to look at this. If you're curious how this works, you know, I do have a platform uh, tutorial series you can look at. But this is what we're interested in, the tutorial relevant bits. So. At the start of frame, we are setting the platform movement object to be just the player sprite. And we are testing collisions with that player sprite. So why is that a problem? Well, <clears throat> let's find out. So right off the bat, you see we're stuck in a wall and drifting upward. Uh, we're bouncing around. If you touch the ground, you actually move into it. We're going to actually set up collisions with this later. This is to do the hitbox. But anyway. Um, yeah, there's a lot of issues. Like, uh, you'll just glitch out, you get stuck on things, I can't even jump there. So it's a real problem. And the reason it's a problem is because we are checking collisions with a complicated moving shape. And so this shape is expanding into the backdrop, triggering a, triggering a collision, and then we start drifting through. And so it's just not a good system. So the way we get around that is by using a hitbox. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's make a hitbox. So let's check the size of our sprite, which is 49 by 49. So I'm going to create an active object, and I'm just going to call this player. Now I know this is called player already, so we're going to rename this to player underscore sprite, because this is just our player sprite. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and make this 49 by 49. Now the hitbox needs to be just that, a box. So go ahead and make a box. I like to actually to make it red. Um, and so what's going to happen is we're going to make this be the player and then we're going to have this player sprite follow it and we're going to check collisions with the box. That way we will not have the issue where we're getting stuck in walls and stuff. Now later we're going to add a hit box not a collision box and that's because if you see we check if we check collisions with uh, this box it's pretty big and so um, I mean enemy collisions. If we, if we check to see if the player hits something that can hurt him with this box, people are going to feel cheated because it's very large. Um, and so it's just really not ideal. Also you could check collisions with enemies with this player sprite, which is okay. But um, people have found out that players like a little bit of leeway, so it's best to actually make a hitbox for enemy detection that's smaller than the sprite and check for if you hit an enemy or not with that. Okay, so what do we need to do to make this work? Well. First, let's go in here and um, let's start a frame. We need to set the object for the platform movement object, and we're going to make that the player. It's called player two. Let me let me rename that. <clears throat> we're going to set that to the, the uh, collision box, okay? And then what we want to do is check collisions not with the sprite but with the collision box. So replace that there with collisions overlapping a backdrop. Okay. So right now, we'll see that the player has now been moved to actually just be this red box. Okay, so that is our actual player now, the red box. <clears throat> so what we need to do now is set up an always event, where we always set the position of the sprite to be the position of the player box. So let's go to position, select position, relative to, and select the box. Um, lastly, we're going to want to make this invisible. So uncheck visible at start. Alright, you can already see that uh, it looks fine. 
collisions are working great. We're not having any issues with getting stuck in things, you know, so that problem is already fixed. So that is essentially our uh, collision box. Easy peasy, right? That's all there is to it, guys. So if you make a collision box, it will fix your issues with animation. Now, what is a hitbox? How are we going to do that? Well, let's make the hitbox. So the hitbox is going to be, again, a box. I'll make it a red box with a black outline so we can see it. Okay, and so we want to have that box follow again the player, so let's go ahead and on the always event where we are setting up the sprite following the uh, player box, let's go ahead and set the position of our hitbox relative to the player. And we're going to keep it visible so we can see if it's, if it's decent. Um, we want to go ahead and center the hotspot on both the player and the hitbox. And then we also want to uh, center the hotspot on our sprite. That's important. You want everything centered for this to work properly. We can hold an alt and click it, and it will center the hotspot on all of the frames, which is what we want. All right, let's test. Um, you know, I'm not happy with that hitbox um, because it is a little, it's a little light on the feet. Let's make it just a tad bigger. So you want to play around with this. You know, actually, honestly, I think a circle would be a better shape. Circle would be better than a uh, square because our player is relatively round-ish and a square will give you sharp edges which, you know, can trigger a collision when you don't necessarily want it. Okay, so... I'm gonna shrink that down to 32, 32. So that is our hit box. Um, we're gonna probably play around the size to make sure it feels just right. Um, but we need to set up some potential collisions with an enemy. So we have spikes right here. So all I'm gonna do is flash the player whenever uh, we collide with these so we know we've been hit. I'm not actually gonna do any damage code or anything because that's not necessary. So to do that, I'm gonna just make an alterable value, call this buffer. And that's what I'm going to use to uh, flash my player when he gets hit. We'll throw that down here. We'll say, does the hitbox overlap another object? And that's the spikes. Also, we want to find out if the buffer value is zero. Um, because we only want to be able to be hit whenever the buffer has reached zero. When that happens, we want to go to the sprite and flash it. That is under uh, visibility. We're going to flash the object every 10 milliseconds. Then we want to set that alterable value of buffer up to something. We'll say 100, just to get a nice long flash there. <clears throat> and then what we want to do is bring that buffer value down if it is greater, or rather, if it is, yeah, if it's greater than zero. So compare the buffer, find out if it is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, we're going to bring that down by one. So subtract one from that value. And if it equals zero, we know that we are done. Uh, and we are now vulnerable again. So when that happens, we need to make the flashing stop. We do that by going to visibility, make object reappear under the player sprite. Okay, so one last thing. I do want to make this invisible. Don't want to see it. And let's see if it works. Okay, so we got hurt. And so as you can see, it gives us a little bit of forgiveness. And um, that's good for games because people don't like to feel cheated when they're playing. And people kind of overestimate, uh, you know, 
what hit them and what didn't. And so they're, people are easily frustrated, players are. So you gotta give them, uh, you gotta make it a little easy on them. But go ahead and play around with the sides, or the, nah. go ahead and play around with the size of that hitbox to get it exactly how you want it. This one might actually be a little too easy. As you see, I am walking over those spikes pretty significantly. So we might want to make it like, you know, uh, 38 by 38. I don't know. We'll just play around with it. But it is good to have it slightly smaller than your player. Um, but yeah, guys, that is essentially it. It's a pretty simple concept. This is hitboxes and collision boxes, which are going to improve your platformers drastically. So uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video educational. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I will try to get back to you, but, you know, no promises. I am pretty busy nowadays. And as always, I recommend checking out my Discord channel. Lots of people in there who are willing to help you in your game development journey. So thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.